Hi, welcome to another sneak peek Saturday at the Alameda Free Library. My name is Jenny and today we are going to read a novel. It's called Earthlings um, and it is by Sayaka Murata. Um, has been recommended to me many, many times. So I'm excited um, to get this started and read you a little bit of it. Um, as always, I'm going to read you the inside of the flap so you know what it's going to be about. As a child, Natsuki doesn't fit in with her family. Her parents favor her sister and her best friend is a plush toy hedgehog named Piut who talks to her. He tells her that he has come from the planet Papin Pop Popia, sorry, on a special quest to help her save the earth. One summer on vacation with her family and her cousin Yu in her grandparents' ramshackle wooden house in the mountains of Nagano, Natsuki decides that she must be an alien which would explain why she can't seem to fit in like everyone else. Later, as a grown woman, <clears throat> living a quiet life with her asexual husband, Natsuki is still pursued by dark shadows from her childhood and decides to flee the baby factory of society for good, searching for answers about the vast and frightening mysteries of the universe. Answers only Natsuki has the power to uncover. All right. Okay, chapter one. Deep in the mountains of Akishina, where Granny and Grandpa live, fragments of night linger even at midday. As we wound our way up steep hairpin bends, I gazed out the window at the swaying trees at the undersides of the leaves so swollen they looked as though they would burst. That was where the pitch black darkness was. I always felt an urge to reach out to that blackness, the color of outer space. Next to me, mom was rod rubbing my sister's back. Are you okay, Keithy? These mountain roads, roads are so steep, no wonder you're feeling carsick. Dad gripped the steering wheel, saying nothing. He was sli driving slowly to keep the car as steady as possible, as he possibly could, glancing anxiously at Kaisi in the rear view mirror. <clears throat> I was 11 and in, five, and in year five of elementary school, I could take care of myself. Looking out of the window at the fragments of the universe was the best way to avoid getting car sick. I'd worked, I'd worked that out when I was eight and hadn't been sick on this road since. My sister was two years older than me, but she was still just a child and wouldn't survive the journey without mom's help. <clears throat> As we drove up and up around endless bends, ears popping, I felt like I was gradually moving toward the sky. Granny's house is high up, close to the universe. I hugged my backpack to me. Inside it was my origami magic wand and my magical transformation mirror. At the very top of the backpack was my best friend, Piot who gave me these magical objects. Piot can't speak human since the evil forces put a spell on him, but he's looking after me so I won't get car sick. That's very nice. I hadn't told my family, but I was a magician, a real one with actually magical powers. I'd met Piot in the supermarket by the station when I was six and just had, <clears throat> and had just started elementary school. He was right on the edge of the soft toy display and looked as though he was about to be thrown out. I bought him with the money I'd received at New Year's. Piot was the one who'd given me my magical objects and powers. He was from planet Popin Bo Popia, 
The magic police had found out that Earth was facing a crisis and had sent him on a mission to save our planet. Since then, I'd been using the powers he'd given me to protect the Earth. The only other person who knew my secret was my cousin Yu. I was dying to see him again. I, I hadn't heard his voice for a whole year. We only ever got to see each other in the summer when our extended family gathered for the annual Auburn Festival. I was wearing my favorite t-shirt, the indigo blue one with stars on it. I bought it with my New Year's money and put it in the closet, still with the price tag on, keeping it especially for today. Hold on tight, Dad said quietly as we approached a particularly sharp bend. The car lurched as we went around it. My sister grunted and covered her mouth with her hand. Open the window to let in some fresh air, mom said, and dad instantly opened the front window on my side. A warm breeze caressed my cheeks and the car filled with the smell of leaves. Kissy, are you okay? My mom sounded like she was about to cry. Dad turned off the air conditioning. Only one more bend, he said. I instinctively clutched the front of my t-shirt. I could just make out the slight swellings beneath my bra. They hadn't been there last year. Had I changed a lot since then? You was the same age as me. What would he think? We would soon reach Granny's house. My boyfriend was waiting for me there. My skin grew hot at the thought and I leaned forward into the breeze. Cousin Yu was my boyfriend. When I had, when, when had I started to feel this way about him? Even before we got together, I'd always been drawn to him. We'd been separ inseparable during the Owen vacation every summer, and even after Oban was over, and Yu went home to Yamagata, and I went back to Chiba, his presence never faded within me. In my memory, he, the traces he left grew stronger and stronger, and by the time I was really longing for him, it was summer again. We were nine years old in year three of elementary school when we first formally promised ourselves to each other. Our uncles had dammed the shallow river by the rice fields with stones to make a knee-deep pool where we cousins could splash about in our bathing suits. Ouch! I cried as I lost my footing and fell on my butt. Careful, Natsuki, the river flows fastest in the middle, you said, his face serious as he helped me up. I'd learned that in school, but I hadn't made the connection with the little river. I've had enough of water, I said. I'm going to play somewhere else. I climbed into the riverbank, picked up the small shoulder bag um, I'd placed carefully on the rock and put on my beach sandals without waiting. I went up the steps to the road and still in my bathing suit, headed for the house. The bag felt alive, warmed by the sun's rays. As I walked alongside the rice fields, I heard footsteps and knew you was following me. Natsuki, wait for me. Leave me alone, I snapped. Yui reached out, picked some small leaves and popped them into his mouth. I couldn't believe my eyes. You, you can't eat that. you got a stomach ache. Don't worry, it's edible. It's called sour dog. Uncle Ter Teruyoshi told me. He held some out to me. I took them and hesitantly put them in my mouth. Ugh, it's so sour. Yeah, it is a bit, but it's good. Where did you find it? There's lots growing around here. We walked around the slope behind the house gathering sour dock leaves, then sat down next to each other to eat them. My bathing suit was wet and uncomfortable, but I liked the taste of the leaves. Now that my mood had improved, I said, since you showed me something you like to say thank you, I let you in on a secret. What secret? Well, actually, I'm a magician. I have a transformation mirror and a magic wand. What sort of magic can you do?
Oops. All kinds. The best spell the, the best spell helps you defeat enemies. Enemies? I mean, maybe ordinary people can't see them, but there are lots of enemies all around us. Bad magic, monsters, that sort of thing. I'm always doing battle with them to protect the earth. I took Piyut out of my bag. He looked like a white hedgehog plush toy, but actually he was an emissary sent by the magic police on planet Puppin Popopia. Piyut had given me the magic wand and mirror to help me use my magical powers, I explained. Wow, Natsuki, that's amazing, you said, his face serious. It's thanks to you protecting the earth that we're living in peace. Right. Hey, what sort of place is that planet Poppin Po... What's it called again? Poppin... <laughs> Poppin Pobopia. I don't know, really. Piot said it was secret. Oh, hmm. I thought it was weird that you seemed more interested in the alien planet than my magical powers, and I looked at him closely. Why do you ask? Um, well, don't tell anyone else, but I have a secret, too. I'm an alien. What? I exclaimed, taken aback. Mitsuko is always saying so. He went on with a serious tone. You're an alien, she says. You were a you are, you're an alien, she says. You were ab abandoned by a spaceship and I took you in. Wow. Really? Mitsuko was Yu's mom. She was dad's little sister and so I called her Aunt Mitsuko. She was really pretty. She was shy and quiet, just like you. I couldn't imagine she would lie or joke about something like this. You know what else? In my drawer, there's a stone that I don't remember having picked up anywhere. It's a black, flat, smooth and really weird shape. So I think it must have come from the space, from the same place I'm from. Wow, so I'm a magician and you're an alien. Well, I don't have any proof, not like you, Natsuki. But I'm sure it's true. Maybe you're actually from planet uh, Poppin Pobopia. Wouldn't that be amazing? You might be from the same planet as Piot, I said excitedly, leaning forward. <clears throat> I wonder if so, I want to go back home someday. I was so shocked I almost dropped my mirror. What? Every time I come here for Obon, I'm always secretly looking for a spaceship that will come and take me home. But I've never found it. I wonder if Piyut can arrange for it to come and get me. No way, Piyut can't do that sort of thing. I felt like crying. I couldn't bear the thought of you not being around. You! Are you going to go away sometime? Probably. I think it would be better for Mitsuku if I did anyway. After all, I'm just an alien that she took in, not her real son. I burst into tears. <laughs> Natsuki, don't cry, he said, rubbed my back, trying to console me. But I like you. I don't want you to go away. But they'll come to get me some time or other, I think. I, I've been waiting for the spaceship for ages. <coughs> His words made me cry even harder. I'm sorry, Natsuki, but while I'm still on Earth, I'll, I'll do anything for you. I feel calm when I'm here at Granny's house. I think it's because it's closer to space, so it's nearer to home for me. But it's also because you're here, too. Really? When I want you to be my boyfriend until you go back to your own planet. You, you nodded. Sure. Really? You mean it? Yes, I really like you too, Natsuki. We hooked pinkies and made three promises. One, you wouldn't tell anyone that I'm a magician. Two, I won't tell anyone that you's an alien from outer space. And three... We won't fall in love with anyone else even after summer's over. We'll definitely meet up here again next summer. Just then I heard footsteps. Hastily I hid Piyut and the mirror inside my bag. 
it was Uncle Terry Yoshi. So this is where you got to, where you go, where you got to. I thought you'd been washed away by the river. Uncle Terry Yoshi was always cheerful and played a lot with us children. Sorry, we apologized. He smiled and stroked our heads. Oh, you got some sour dog. Do you like it, Natsuki? It's quite sour, but tasty. Yes, I do like it. You do? That means you're a real mountain woman now. Then, all right, come along. Granny's looking for you because she's cut up some peaches. Okay, we headed back to our house together, to the house together. I would, I could still feel where my pinky had hooked used. I ran to the front door, hoping no one would notice. I was blushing. You, too, was walking fast and looking down at his feet. Ever since then, you has been my boyfriend. The magician would be the girlfriend of the alien, at least until he traveled back to his home planet. And that's where I'm going to stop for today. Um, again, the book is called Earthlings by Zayaka Murata. It's Lou Piot on the cover. Um, you can find this in our news section. Um, yeah, uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you'd like to borrow this, uh, feel free to place a hold on it to make sure it's still available. Uh, and other than that, I will see you next sneak peek Saturday. <laughs> Bye.